we're being spied on by our government. Duh. Last week, Netflix released another documentary, and it's about as wild as they all seem to be. Running with the Devil, the Wild World of John McAfee follows the computer programmer, businessman, and two-time presidential candidate who you may recognize first and foremost as the inventor of one of the most well-known pieces of software, McAfee Antivirus. I'm Adam Andrews with Where Are They Now, and today we are talking all about John McAfee. Born in Gloucester, McAfee was raised in Salem, Virginia by his British mother and American father, who was an alcoholic and passed away when McAfee was 15 years old. But despite a bit of a rough upbringing, McAfee went on to study for a PhD in mathematics at Northeast Louisiana State College, which he didn't get thanks to the fact that he was expelled from the program in 1968 after entering into a relationship with an undergraduate student. who later became his first wife. Alas, after this he began his career working as a programmer for NASA's Institute for Space Studies. Then he moved on to become a software designer at UNIVAC, then to Xerox as an operating system architect, and after that he worked for Lockheed. Honestly, a super interesting resume. I don't know what half of it meant, but it sure sounds cooler than, I don't know, someone like YouTube host. Now, in 1987, he created McAfee Associates after learning about the brain computer virus made for the PC, and he created an antivirus software called VirusScan that would detect and remove the brain computer virus. He then went on and sold McAfee to Intel, you know, that big computer company you may have heard of, for over $7.6 billion. Despite the big success of his constant use of software, McAfee told BBC News that he never actually used any of his own products, saying, quote, I'm constantly under attack, yet I use no software protection. I protect myself by constantly changing my IP address, by not attaching my name to any device I use, and by not going onto sites where you might pick up a virus. Wacha. That's how I'm imagining he said it. He probably didn't say it like that. Despite John selling his company to Intel for over $7.6 billion, at his peak, the computer genius's net worth was only $100 million, which then fell all the way down to $4 million in 2009 after the financial crisis of 2007-2008. Again, though, I'd still take $4 million any day. But things just got wilder and wilder for the eccentric millionaire after selling his company. Outside of McAfee Software, the entrepreneur found other ventures, including the instant messaging program called Tribal Voice, and he invested in firewall software company Zone Lab. Now, by 2009, he was living in Belize, where he started a herbal antibiotics company alongside Alison Adonisio, called Quorum X. Now, McAfee believed that a plant in the country contained ingredients that would stop bacteria from sending chemical signals to one another, basically thinking that they had created a herbal form of neosporin. He went from tech and antiviruses to jungle river plants and antibodies. But that didn't last long as the company dissolved in 2012 and something much, much crazier happened. In November 2012, Belize police named McAfee a person of interest in the murder of Gregory Viant Fall, who was McAfee's neighbor on a large island in Belize where they both resided. According to the Times, Fall had disliked McAfee's dogs who were constantly barking. Now, McAfee revealed that he was afraid the police would think he was responsible for the killings and, like any sane person would do, he subsequently buried himself in a shallow trench of sand with a cardboard box over his head for several hours. No, I'm, I'm not joking at all, actually. After burying himself in the sand, McAfee did not cooperate with police questioning and instead went on the run, claiming the Belize government was corrupt, out to get him, and that he feared police would kill him. Which seems like a stretch, but hey, I just work here, I don't know. McAfee personally invited cameraman Robert King and vice editor-in-chief Rocco Castoro to document the former businessman, as well as security guards and journalists. You may think, hmm, if you're on the run from the authorities, why would you want to make video proof of it all? And yes, I wonder that too, but in the footage captured by King and Castoro, which includes ludicrous disguises, faking disabilities, and paying people off to avoid detection, all of which can be seen in the Netflix documentary, McAfee himself says, it's dramatic and people love that. Which is just 
I mean, that should kind of explain his character to you all in one sentence. Also on this first fugitive run was his 20-year-old girlfriend, Samantha Herrera, who traveled with the group to Guatemala, where they were arrested for illegally entering the country. After being arrested and taken to await deportation to Belize, McAfee suffered two minor heart attacks, or no he didn't, because he told CNN that he faked the heart attacks to buy his lawyer time to file appeals that would prevent him from being deported to Belize, which actually worked and he was subsequently deported to the United States in December of 2012. But wait, go back. Did I say first fugitive run? Why yes. Yes, I did. A few years after McAfee was eventually deported to the United States and was able to live free, in which time he made headlines after posting a YouTube video called How to Uninstall McAfee Antivirus, in which he made fun of the company's software while snorting white powder, in January 2019, he went on the run again. After trying to run for presidential office as a candidate of the Cyber Party before changing to the Libertarian Party, coming second in the primaries and third at the 2016 Libertarian National Convention, authorities discovered he'd failed to file his US income taxes for four years, which apparently is a perfect reason for McAfee to flee the country, hanging out on a boat with his latest wife, Janice Dyson, in international waters and eventually making his way to Spain. In October of 2020, he was arrested arrested in Spain on US charges of tax evasion, fraud, and insider trading and then indicted the next year. On June 23rd, 2021, the Spanish National Court approved his extradition to the US, but it wouldn't seem to matter as McAfee was found passed away in his cell, having seemingly taken his own life at the age of 75. Although his then wife Janice believes her husband would never have done that which as you can imagine led to conspiracy theories that began to circulate, especially due to a tweet he posted the day he was arrested. Directed by Charlie Russell, Running with the Devil, The Wild World of John McAfee is a Netflix documentary that recounts McAfee's years on the run, relying on the footage shot by Robert King. It also explores McAfee's prison escape and his claims of having quote, hacked the world. Thanks to McAfee literally bringing a cameraman and editor along with him on his run from the police, Almost all the footage and interviews are with the tech pioneer himself, which is kind of cool for a documentary. Although he is clearly worried about the danger he is in, at the same time it's kind of strange because he prioritizes his weird narcissistic tendency to want to be the star of his own story more than laying low and avoiding the authorities. While on the run, both while evading Belize authorities and later evading American authorities, he literally tells anyone and everyone they meet who he is and usually says, quote, maybe you've heard of me? Yeah. Every time I turn on my computer, John, I have heard of you, but I didn't know you were this wild, I gotta be honest. The film itself gets wilder and wilder, as you may expect, with McAfee getting increasingly more and more paranoid and jumping from insane action to insane action and all the while spouting wild speculation about who exactly is trying to catch him from the governments to cartels. It's not your ideal living situation, but it's more entertaining and interesting than you may initially have thought. Like I said before, after his passing, there were all kinds of claims and theories about the guy not actually passing away, or it being staged. But in the documentary, there is a rather huge claim from McAfee's ex-girlfriend, Samantha Herrera, who says in the interview for the film that McAfee faked his own death. When she was asked when she last saw McAfee, Herrera said, quote, I don't know if I should say, but two weeks ago after his death, I got a call from Texas. It said, it's me, John. I paid off people to pretend that I am dead, but I am not dead. There are only three persons in this world that know I'm still alive. And then he asked me to run away with him. End quote. The director of the documentary has said that he couldn't tell if she even believed it or not. So there's that. But also, McAfee's ghostwriter, Alex Cody Foster, told RadioTimes.com in an exclusive that he received a notification on the Telegram app a month after McAfee's death that said that his number had joined the app. Alex said he texted the number saying, hey, you're using a dead man's phone, who are you? And they read the message but just did not respond. 
Alex Foster, as I mentioned, was actually McAfee's ghostwriter and accompanied McAfee on some of his adventures while writing the man's autobiography. And he says that the documentary only scratches the surface. About the death that started the on the run lifestyle, Foster says that McAfee gave numerous alternate accounts of the events. In some, he claims his then girlfriend did it to avenge the passing of their dog by poisoning, and another says the cartel did it in a completely unrelated matter to him. Or there's also the Belizean police setting him up after he refused to give them a $2 million payoff for catching him with substances. All of which are just as bonkers as the last, but that's the thing with John McAfee. You just don't know what you're getting here. But alas, that is all the time I have for today to talk about John McAfee. If you want to know more, then definitely check out the documentary. It's wild to say the least. Also, let me know in the comments if you do check it out and what you thought of both this video and the documentary in the comments below. For now though, I have been your host Adam Andrews, check me out on Instagram and make sure to drop a like and subscribe here at Where Are They Now, and as always guys, stay safe and well informed out there. Toodles.